Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in on Neri's Kitchen. Today's guest has been cooking professionally for 15 years and has won five provincial cooking competitions throughout his career. Cooking wasn't his first career choice, teaching was, but fell in love with cooking after he learned he had a natural talent for it. He is a certified life coach through Royal Roads University and is currently building a business plan to open up his own restaurant. In his spare time, he loves to golf and do some yard work. Please welcome Chef Juan. Hi, everyone. <laughs> How are you? What are we making today, Chef? Uh, we're going to be making uh, a very traditional Vietnamese dish, uh, as I am Vietnamese. Uh, we're going to be making pho today. Yummy. Um, so pho is basically a beef, in translation, it's a beef noodle soup. And um, it's the national dish of Vietnam. Oh yeah, the first thing I think of when I think of Vietnamese food is pho. Yeah. So I'm really excited for it today. Sweet. How do you pronounce it? Uh, so pho, phonetically, would be spelled F-U-H. Okay. And how do people mostly say it? Pho. <laughs> Which is... Uh, That's not right. Not, so it's not, not pho, right. it's not pho, it's pho. 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 Yeah. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, I don't mind. Um, Pho, pho, it's still the same in here. Yeah, it's, it's we know we know here. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get started. Yeah. Um, so I got a couple of ingredients uh, to share with you guys. So I got some green onions, cilantro, onions, and ginger here. This is going to be um, part of the garnish on the stock. Uh, I got some beef balls. You can find this at any grocery store in, in terms of. Uh, Asian grocery store. Um, this is piece of meat here is inside round, but technically you could use any uh, meat um, that is steakable. So like tenderloin, strip loin, sirloin, um, you could use as well. It's just going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, so inside round is kind of like one of the cheaper cuts. You can find it at any butcher shop. Um, and then we have Thai basil here. Uh, limes, bird's eye chili or Thai chili, and bean sprouts, um, also as a garnish. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing um, is making the most important part of this dish, which is the broth. Um, you guys might know it as a bone broth. We just call it broth. <laughs> All right, so we'll grab this pot, and this is a uh, Usually, it's going to be a two-day process uh, to make this stock or this broth. Um, since we're kind of like in a time constraint, and I like making quicker versions of things anyway, um, we're going to do it in half an hour. Who has two days to cook broth? I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know a lot of my ancestors will be rolling in their graves right now for using beef stock. But trust me, it is a time saver. Um, no one has a lot of time anymore to think ahead in terms of, oh, I want to eat pho in two days. That's not going to happen. So uh, be broth, lifesaver. So Nari, right, I'll have you kind of like pour this into the pot here. And pour all um, of it? Yeah, pour all of it. Okay. Um, where's the cutting board? Oh, okay. All right, I guess I'll... Okay, you, I'll yeah, you can finish I'll that. I'll get you a cutting board. And then with this broth, I'm just using beef broth, but I know Campbell's... Um, sorry. They actually have the pho stock. Yes. The Campbell's. I've never tried it, but I've seen it in the grocery store. I've tried it, and to be honest, I don't mind it. Oh, really? I don't mind you it. You don't mind it? No, I don't. It's... uh. It has all the, the flavor profiles. It might be a little light on the, um, on the seasoning, but I mean, we could always do that after the fact. Okay, so note to self, I'm going to try yours. Yep. And then I will try the Campbell's from the grocery store. Yeah. Just as a little comparison. Yeah. The reason why I don't have Campbell's right now is because, um, first off, they don't have one. They don't have it. And second, it's uh, 
it's just too much after you put in all the spices and all mm -hmm. the herbs and stuff. Right. Because in general, to use something like that, you don't need to put anything in it. Right. It's just kind of like boil it and go. Exactly. So, and what else are we adding to the stock? So what we're going to do is, Nario, how do you chop up this onion here and this garlic? Or uh, not garlic, ginger. So this white onion? Yeah, so just okay. cut the ends. Yep. And then cut it right in half. Oh, cut it in half? Yep. Okay. And then this half, we're going to just put aside for now. Okay. That is going to go into the broth. Just and as is? Just rough chop. Oh, a rough chop. Yeah, so maybe cut it in half, maybe into quarters. Leave it, leave it big. Okay, so half of an onion, quartered. Yep. And then this uh, this ginger here. We we don't need the whole thing. Maybe cut um, half of it. Okay. Peel it. Oh, peel it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I've well, never actually peeled it. <laughs> what, what I like to do is is I'll just cut it. Okay, that's what I would normally do. But yeah. then on cooking shows, I've seen people use a spoon, right? Yeah. And I've never actually used the spoon. I find it harder. So, you know, we'll just do it that way because I don't want to yeah, use the spoon. Yeah, uh, because the spoon is... It's hard. It's, it's hard, hard to peel it with the spoon. Because of all the crevices and mm -hmm. stuff. But again, we're putting it into a stock, so it's going to boil away. Exactly. So having a little bit of skin on this garlic is not detrimental to the dish at all but um, once you're peeled roughly peeled give it some surface area pop it in okay and this is and, garbage uh, now? yeah that is okay. garbage and that's pretty much it that's the base now we're just gonna quickly boil this bring it to a boil a boil okay let's just use this yep. bigger one here It'll boil very fast. <clears throat> and then with this guy, uh, onion, we're going to thinly slice it this way. Okay, I can do that. And then we're going to do the same with the green onions and the cilantro. We're going to put it all in one bowl. So I guess the bowls are here. Oh, it's just over there. <laughs> And I'm putting this onion where? Just in this bowl. Oh, in that bowl. Yeah. Okay. Um, this All is basically it? for garnish. Got it. Um, as well as as well as the cilantro and the green onion. Okay, I'm not a I'm not a chef, so it's not fancy, but there you go. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. <laughs> this is a home cook. <laughs> yeah. So the reason why we have raw onion um, as a garnish is mainly because we we like to have a little bit of texture to go into. Uh, the broth right. and the soup. Um, once you pour the hot broth onto the onions, it's kind of like it melts, but it keeps that texture. Right. Um, cool. And then before we cut this, we're, we're just going to take this piece of beef here. Okay. Um, we're going to pop it into the freezer. The freezer. Oh, yeah. right. So we can slice it. Correct. Okay. So it just makes it... So freezing it for about half an hour gives you kind of like the perfect... Um, texture, perfect texture to slice it really thinly. Um, you can also ask your butcher shop to do it for you, but since, since I uh, didn't have time or no butcher shop to open, we can do it ourselves. Then now we're going to be cutting up this uh, green onions. And then Lara, you can do this. Green onions, uh, just thinly sliced, straight cut. All of it? Uh, yep. Thinly sliced. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, you're left-handed. I'm left-handed. And this is not my knife, so I'm not used to this knife. So it's super buttery. <laughs> Super sharp. It's very sharp and it's very big and like I said, I'm not used to this knife. This is Han's knife. Yeah. And a little history lesson, that's my first knife in my career. Really? Yeah. So this knife is 15 years old? Or? 15 years old. Okay. Um, it's been with me since the beginning. I've. It used to be 10 inches long. Uh-huh. 
but I've sharpened it down to almost seven inches now. So it's been a while. Is that enough green onions? Uh, you can cut it off, yeah. I would cut it down to once you reach the white. Uh huh. And then for those of you who likes to uh, save a little bit of money on green onions, um, just pop the roots into a cup of water, leave it for a couple of days. And, and it know, will regrow. I've actually seen that on yeah. uh, on social media where yeah. people do save the scraps of things, yeah. put in water, and then you have, you know, your onions, your romaine lettuce, whatever, right? Yeah. Your herbs. Yeah, green onions are the most common mainly because they still have the roots intact. Right. And it's just so easy. They, all they need is sunlight. Um, I wouldn't say they grow forever, but definitely three, maybe four grows. Okay, so I will be saving this. Yes. Save some money. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then basically a rough chop on the cilantro. And I love cilantro. There are some people that hate it with a passion because apparently it tastes like soap to them. Yeah. But I just love cilantro. Yeah. So, okay. nice chopping. <laughs> so we're just going to put this all in one bowl here. All right. And this is kind of like our, I guess, garnish slash um, aromatic bowl that we're going to play around with a little later. And you can just mix this up um, in the bowl, mm -hmm. no big deal. And then I'm just going to quickly tell you guys about Vietnamese cuisine in general. So a lot of people know the five different flavors of our, I guess, our tastes. Mm -hmm. So sweet, sour, savory, bitter, salty? Yeah, yeah salty. So the five main tastes. Um, in Asian cuisine in general, we have nine. So it's all that, plus we have raw, we have cooked, we have fresh, we have preserved, we have, because we take textural components into consideration as well. Right. So in, I believe in China or something like that, um, they have like nine different words for the word crispy. Really? Yeah. Didn't know that. So texture is a really important part of Asian cuisine in general. Okay. Um, so we put that into our into our flavor profiles as well. Um, so th that's why we keep things a lot of things raw, like bean sprouts and garnishes and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, things that are preserved, um, like fish sauce, for example. Um, again, fish sauce, one of the main. I guess the ingredient for Thai and Vietnamese cuisine, fish sauce. Um, this is Vietnamese style fish sauce. There's other uh, Thai style fish sauces as well that it's a little too robust for Vietnamese cuisine. Um, but what you're looking for is a nice amber color, uh, nothing too dark because it tends to get a little salty and it does have a, a salty fishy flavor, but not necessarily like fishy. It's, it's hard to explain. You just have to try it. It's very salty, pretty yeah. much. Um, but this is, a, this is a staple. This is what we use day in, day out, just to season our food. Oh, yeah. I, like, I grew up on fish sauce also, and we, we always had fish sauce as mm. a dipping for, um, for meats or added to, um, to soups. Like yeah. pho. So in addition to uh, the broth, once it's brought up to a boil, um, there's a spice pack that you can buy at the local Asian supermarket. Um, this one I got at Lucky. Uh, it says full spices on it, so you can't really mistake it. But what's inside is there's, I believe there's four different spices inside the spice pack. Um, I could be mistaken, it could be five. I think it's, I'm looking at it right now. One, two, three, there's five actually. Five, okay. So there's cardamom, star anise, uh, Saigon cinnamon. So this is Saigon cinnamon here. This is star anise. Star anise has more like a licorice flavor. Cinnamon has more like a warm apple pie flavor. Um, it and this yummy actually. In this spice packet, there's a lot of ginseng as well. This is ginseng. 
And then at the bottom, you'll have black peppercorns and cardamom, or uh, sorry, coriander seeds, which I'll try to get a little later. But you only need a couple. Um, a lot of people toast their spices ahead of time. Uh, not necessary in this application since we're going to be boiling it um, for about half an hour anyway. Uh, you kind of just want to use a satchel that it comes with because you don't want it to taste like Christmas broth, um, which is not good. Uh, so pho broth is delicious. So you don't want to steep it for too long. Half an hour should be good enough. And we're going to put it in the satchel right here so that we can pull it out as a whole a little later. And how much are we adding in here in this bag? So in the bag, I'm going to put in four or five starting seeds. Okay. And then two, maybe three cinnamon, cinnamon uh, sticks. sticks. And then about 10, if I can get it. Ten um, cloves and ten black peppers, corns. I might need a bowl. Yeah, let's get a bowl, and that way our viewers can see what it's made out of. Yeah. Okay, so here's a bowl, and actually our broth is ready too. Okay. So in this bowl, you have a bunch of stuff. And then I'm going to take out about 10 cloves. I've never actually seen a clove before. Yeah. Have you not put cloves in, uh, what's it called, like mandarin oranges and put in a pumpkin? I do not know. Oh. <laughs> my cooking is very basic, very simple. But I've seen, like I know my mom has used these spices before. I've never actually paid attention to these. I'm kind of sad yeah. I haven't. Yeah, cloves give the pho broth a little bit more warmth mm -hmm. and um, it's more spicy than anything. Okay. Um, and then the black pepper corns are there just to give it that black pepper feel. Right. Um, Vietnamese people love black pepper. I don't know why, but we do. Set that aside. We're going to tie this up. So this is called a satchel um, in culinary terms. A spice satchel. So we're just going to tie this up. If I know how to do a knot. Uh, and now you could pull that down to a simmer. A simmer? Okay. Yeah. So like a four out of nine? Yeah, four out of nine is fine. Okay. Because you want it to uh, be not out of rolling boil, but just a simmer. So once our satchel is ready, we're just going to pop this in our broth. And just let it steep for about 20 minutes to about 40 minutes maximum. Anything more than that, you're going to make um, the broth is just too, too much spice. And um, it's not going to taste all that great. Um, at this point in time, we're going to season the broth a little bit more. So we're going to season it with fish sauce. We're going to add a pinch of salt just okay. to bring up the beefiness okay. of the broth. And then we're going to add um, a tablespoon of sugar. Uh, usually Vietnamese cuisine, rock sugar is the way to go. But um, rock sugar is kind of like hard to come by nowadays. So we just use regular sugar. Regular sugar. It's fine. So for fish sauce, for three liters of broth, it should be around uh, a cup, or sorry, half a cup of fish sauce. So I'm just going to eyeball it. In this case, it's probably going to be about eight splashes. A pinch of salt. Okay, I'll give this to you. A sprinkle. Yeah. A pinch. And then a tablespoon of sugar. I don't actually have sugar in my house, <laughs> but would honey work or stevia or? Um, if you don't have sugar, it's not yeah. a problem. Okay. Uh, it's just uh, pho is a little bit on the sweeter spectrum right. of soup. Right. Uh, so that's why rock sugar, because rock sugar is a little mild. 
Oh, okay. Um, then regular sugar. But regular sugar, if you don't have it, it's fine. It's not going to hurt the dish at all. Uh, it's still going to be great. But uh, yeah. So once all that's in, bring it up back to the simmer. Let it steep. Good to go. Uh, we're going to do the rest of this prep. So we're going to be, uh, these are meatballs again. You can buy this at, I bought this at Lucky. You can buy it at any Asian butcher shop or grocery store. They should have meatballs already made. Um, I think well, I've seen it at Superstore also. Yeah, I, I haven't actually looked at Superstore if they had meatballs like this. Okay. But if they did, then you can find it at Superstore as well. Um, in this case, we're going to be just cutting them in half. In half? Okay. Yeah. Because uh, we like to stretch our ingredients. Right, right. That's just uh, that's just the, the Asian way of doing it. Um, because back in the day, there's not a lot of people that could afford um, these fresh ingredients all too often. So we like to stretch ingredients and eat them with either rice noodles or just put them on rice um, to feed a family of like 50. As opposed to, you know. A family of four. Yeah. But even if you had it whole, it's actually pretty big too. Yeah, it's also pretty big. It's like a two bite brownie. Right. And then limes, you can cut into wedges. And then, uh, yeah. If, if you really want. To me, I like to take bites out of bird's eye chili while I'm eating. Uh, that's just how I eat it. But a lot of people like to slice it. They like to pickle it and put it into their soup as well. Um, it's actually just preference. But we could we could also slice these birds like chilies. So cut this into wedges, you said? Yeah, wedges are fine. Okay. Just going to make this easier for people. Yeah. And we're squeezing that at the end? Yes. So this is just if you... We want a splash of acidity, um, lime is the way to go. And with uh, the similarities between Thai cuisine and Vietnamese cuisine, they're pretty much uncanny. It's like we love limes, we love fish sauce, we love... Peanuts. Peanuts. Um, just like a bunch of similar ingredients because we're kind of like in the same vicinity of the world. And then slicing these bird's eye chilies, we're going to slice them in a bias, like so. Give a little surface area. Now, if you don't want to eat too spicy, but you want to have a little kick, you could always seed the chilies, um, since the skin doesn't really have the, the capsicum. Or right. The, much of the heat? Yeah, much of the heat. It's all in the seeds. Or you can also, I've seen people cut the chili in half and just put it in their soup and then the heat just slowly comes out too. Yeah, that works too. So I'm just going to put this aside. So most of our prep is pretty much done. We're just waiting now on, on the, the broth to come up to a simmer again. And um, yeah, I guess it's ready to be served and eaten. And this is the fast version of the broth yes. because for time's sake, we don't have the four hours, we don't have the two days. So this is the simplified version, yeah. but still just as tasty. Yeah. Very simplified version. Again, not hating on it, but it's uh, if you don't have the time or you can't think ahead a little bit longer than usual, two days is, is a long time. Um, this one hour version of it or half hour version of it will do the trick Perfect. if you have that craving. Noodles. Before we uh, start off with the noodles, this is the type of noodles. It has to have the word pho on it. Um, there's other noodles that are imitators. Um, it's just not the same. Uh, you can buy this fresh. Here I have fresh. You could also buy dry. The dry version of these rice noodles is you'll have to soak them for at least I would say about 15 minutes okay. um, in hot water just for it to bloom. Got it. Um, in this case, using fresh, you don't have to do that. You just pour the boiling water in it, 
-hmm. and it's good to go. And where can you find the fresh noodles? Fresh noodles, I got this at Lucky. Uh, as most things here are bought at Lucky, um, you can buy this at any grocery store. Uh, sorry, at any Asian grocery store. Um, they would have it. But um, if you don't feel like you're going to eat this whole bag in one go, you could either freeze it or just buy dry. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So we're going to open this. We're going to actually assemble our bowl as we speak. So again, it's fresh noodles. It kind of feels dry, but um, we're just going to put it in this bowl. You can also soak these noodles as well. Uh, for two three minutes in hot water, hot tap water is fine. Um, not necessary though. So I'm just gonna cut these noodles since they're all kind of like in one one go. Who? You go. One of our viewers. Oh yeah. Yeah, he wants to know how much was that knife. So originally, when I bought it, this knife was, I believe, eighty nine dollars. At uh, this place called D.A. Neal's. D.A. Neal's is located on Barry Street. Um, Barry and Silver, I believe. So if you really want to get one, it's called Superior Culinary Master. The logo here is kind of like, um, I don't know if you can see it. Superior Culinary Master. It's a uh, surgical steel. It's a, it's a good handy tool really great beginner's knife um, if, if you really want to get into cooking. But what makes it a really good beginner's knife? Because when I was using it just to chop the onions, mm -hmm. I felt it was really big. And I'm not used to using big knives, right? So in, in terms of the culinary world, the smaller the knife, mm -hmm. the more delicate the work. I see, okay. Right. So this knife in general is a workhorse. Got it. So bigger knives usually is used for bigger tasks mm -hmm. and or longer tasks. So then um, that's why I got this knife. It's just, it used to be this long. It used to be this wide. Right, okay. And it's just like, I've been sharpening it throughout the years. And this is how, this is kind of like how it got to this point. Got it. Um, but that's the only knife you use for bigger tasks? Yeah. Um, I kind of retired this knife two years ago. So I put this on my shelf. Oh, okay. So I brought it here today just to use. And surprisingly, it held up in terms of the sharpness because mm -hmm. it's been in uh, storage for about two years two now. Two years, yes. Since I have other knives that I could bang up and use. And but so you the... said that cooking wasn't actually your first career choice, teaching was. Yeah. I went to, before I was in the culinary world, mm -hmm. I actually went through university. I tried to get into education and you know what? It just... The passion of teaching just, it's just one of those things of molding the minds of the future that interested me. And cooking is just something that I've always grew up learning right. through like my grandparents or my, my parents as well. Uh, they would teach me how to cook, but I never had, it never really clicked until I worked in the kitchen. So when I was, 18 i started late um most culinary students start at 16. okay so i started at 18 so i started a little late but once i started in the restaurant business the rest was history okay because i just never really wanted to go back to to uh to education i guess because in the culinary world mm -hmm. you're still teaching you're right. still you're still teaching others how to um how to cook how mm -hmm. to critical thing right and how to in less of uh i guess in other words just how to adapt to situations okay because that's kind of like what we do um something goes wrong boom adapt how can you fix it right away yeah okay there's always a solution to a problem uh, especially in the kitchen and if it's not just take it off the menu <laughs> take it off the menu. If not, yeah. Easy peasy, right? Yeah. Uh, so, we're just going to double check on our stock for now. It's about uh, 10 minutes. So,
So we have about another five-ish minutes uh, to go. Um, I'm just going to search for the cilantro here. And we're just going to mix this up. Because this is kind of like our, our garnish that we're going to put before and after. And then I'm going to try to grab the onions. Yeah, I can get a plate to make it easier. Yeah. And so, Han, you said you're a certified life coach. Tell me about that. Yeah, so it was a, it was through a program that... So I used to work at this restaurant called Joey, Joey Restaurant. Um, they have two locations, Joey Polo Park, Joey Kenniston, mm -hmm. right? Everyone knows Joey's. They have this program that you could go to Royal, Royal Roads University in British Columbia you get certified in uh, a coaching course, mm -hmm. and it's a life coaching course. Okay. So uh, once you understand that, you you learn like the art of conversation. Right. You you learn how to, um, I guess, be active in terms of wordplay, um, just to help people understand their problems and how you could. I guess, ask the right questions to help them solve their own problems. Okay. So if someone was to buy a house, but they don't know what to do, you'd be like, okay, well, what's your budget? Right. Or be like, yeah, you know. I've actually seen a life coach. I saw a life coach about, um, about five years ago. Yep. No, maybe about 10 years ago now. Anyway, so I, I thought I had, um, I was trying to resolve something, right? Mm. And... So I, I saw a life coach and she was just asking me a lot of questions. Mm. And so these little questions would trigger a lot of um, things in my head. So I, I found out I was doing a lot of talking mm. and talking. So this whole session, I, I talked for about an hour. Meanwhile, she only asked me about three questions, but I learned so much from these deeper questions. Yeah. And so it really helped me, um, I, I guess uh, it helped me trigger or help me um, solve what I thought was a problem, but actually yeah. wasn't a problem, but I just had to dig deeper. Mm. What was making me feel this way? Or how can I help the situation, right? right? So it actually helped me quite a bit in just three sessions. Yeah. And it's just all about asking the right questions. That's what it was, asking the yeah. right questions. And you know, there was no right or wrong. It was just yeah. digging a little deeper. Mm. So it was a great, great time for me. Yeah. And honestly, I learned a lot through that course. Um, I guess you could say I'm a little bit more approachable when it comes to these conversations or just hard conversations. Um, dealing with conflict now is pretty easy uh, coming from that course. And it's just like a good course to take in terms of um, just learning about yourself, learning the cues of other people and just try to help, you know. Okay, very good. Yeah. So uh, we have a bowl full of noodles. We're gonna basically dress these bowl full of noodles with onions. And like I said, the white onions here are for texture and the sharpness of the onion kind of like brings out the, the flavor of the broth itself. Uh, the cilantro, uh, again, you can omit the cilantro based on the fact that if you can't eat it because it's, I believe there's like a gene that you have to have to make it taste like soap. I feel like I don't have that gene. I don't have that gene. I think cilantro but, is wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I, I love cilantro as well. Scallions or green onions as well. We're just going to put this on top. Um, Mary, can you check on the beef yes. if it's uh, ready to go? So this is kind of like the start of it. Uh, once the beef is good okay it's it's cool enough i mean i would like it a little bit more frozen but that's okay we're just gonna put this right here and so we'll be adding this beef on top of the bowl yes okay so the thinner the slices of beef the better because once the hot broth is poured on top of this beef, it's just going to instantly cook. 
sorry, thank you. And I'll get you to slice this, just because. Uh, yeah, that's totally yeah, That's fine. your art. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of beef, you want to actually look for the grain. The grain is actually going this way, if you could see it. So we're gonna cut. We're gonna cut with the grain on this one, because we're gonna cut into a smaller section. So we're just gonna use this. I'm gonna put this away for now, and then. Uh, and ideally, it'd be a little bit more frozen than this, but it's right now it's firm enough for me to cut. So I'm just going to cut into slices about one eighth of an inch thickness. So it's fairly thin. Now again, if you guys can't do this, uh, you can always try to ask a butcher to do it for you. Or you could probably buy a pack of what they call stir-fry beef at any, any store. And then we're going to put in maybe six, seven, eight. All right, how much you want to eat? I like beef, so I mean, the more the merrier, right? I always ask for extra meat when I go to restaurants. Sounds good. But let's just do it the traditional way. Okay. So, I mean, I got 10 slices here. So what you want to do is you kind of want to lay them flat onto the bowl and that way it's easier to cook when you put the hot broth over correct and han what is your favorite vietnamese food my favorite vietnamese food um would probably be this dish pho. beef pho. with the balls with the balls. You can't, you can't not have it with the balls. I actually grew up eating pho, yeah. but um, in the Cambodian culture, we call it katil. And so it's the exact same process. And we would, my mom would make it for lunch because it would take all day to cook. Right. And then we'd have it again for dinner. So you'd eat it twice in a day because it's so good, right? Yep. Oh, tripe. Yeah. Yes, that's stomach cow. No, cow stomach. Cow. Cow in, uh, intestine, intestine lining. 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 Right. So it's the white thing from the cow. Yeah. So I mean, there's there's so much variations of this dish out there already. I mean, I've had lobster pho. I had chicken pho. That's a that's a big one. Um, pork pho. There's pork. Yes. Um, there's so many different types, so many different kinds. Again, every family does a burger different. So is pho. Pho is different in every family, every household. We all do it different, but this is just a very generalized way of doing it. Because a lot of people toast their uh, spices. Right. They also toast their onions and their uh, their ginger. Um, and there's also some fried garlic on top, I think. Yeah, some some families do that as well. Um, but again, this, this is just very simple. Mm -hmm. This is how I would eat it at home if I, if I need to make something really quick. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to check on our broth right now. And it looks pretty good. Have a, have a quick sniff or smell. <laughs> vision, smell, smell vision. yeah. Smell yeah, of vision. Smells nice. Mm. So everything's kind of like all chilling together uh it's been about 20 minutes now so i would take out the spices at this point in time we're just gonna crank this up on high we're gonna crank this up on high bring it up to back to boil okay. so the satchel is done because you don't want to overcook the the spices yeah, you, you just don't want to oversteep the spices because then it's just going to turn into uh, a, a spicy water. Right. And, and opposed to a pub broth. So you could throw that satchel away. Bring it up to a boil. It'll take maybe another minute or two. Yeah, so it's going to take a minute to boil. Once it's at a rolling boil, so that just means that it's boiling crazy cra crazily 
And then we're just going to ladle the soup onto the bowl once it's done. And we're going to eat. And then what about the beef balls? Do we put it in the broth too? Or do yes. we... Okay. So we're going to... I was just about to say this beef broth or the beef balls, you don't have to add it in right away. Mm -hmm. This could be a last minute deal. Right. Mainly because it's already cooked. Yes. It's already ready to go. You could actually just put it in here if you really want to. Um, but I just like the fact that you put this in the broth last minute. It should be fine. Just have it warm up. Right. Okay. So I'm just going to put it in right now. So have that bring up to a boil again. And once that's cooked and done. And then we're, we're ready to eat. We're ready to go. So give it another 20 seconds just to get everything back in order. And we're pretty much done. So this is a, a rolling boil. Try not to take any of the ginger uh, with you as you scoop. But here is the outcome. And you can see right away that the beef is already getting cooked. The beef is already getting cooked. And who likes overcooked beef anyway? Um, I certainly don't. So that's why we tend to eat our beef uh, rare slash mid rare in a bowl of fat. All right. Just, just turn gonna, this down a yeah, little bit. Turn it down. That should be good. We're going to bring this over. And then again, I would like to re garnish. We garnish with some bean sprouts, and I like to layer this uh, garnish as I as I eat. So bean sprouts on top, just like so. Uh, Nari Thai basil, just on top, and then a little bit on top. A little bit more cilantro and onion, and then a little bit of Thai chilies, just like so. Oh, and, and this is optional too. But optional, but it's uh, delicious in your pho. Awesome. Ooh, smells good. Mm -hmm. It's very comforting. <laughs> and then once you're once you have your bofa, the dipping sauce, uh, majority of people might have it at home, hoisin sauce. Um, you could decide not to use it, um, but hoisin sauce is kind of like the staple for this dish. Um, it has a nice sweeter taste to yeah, it. Sweet, and it accompanies really well with sriracha. So yes. it's hoisin and sriracha is kind of like the dipping sauces, and uh, that's pretty much it. I actually like to take the beef balls and dip it in the hoisin sauce. It's yeah. so yummy. Okay, let's have a taste. You know, I don't have my chopsticks here, so we're just going to use simple fork and sounds spoon. Sounds good, sounds good. I, I like to mix in the bean sprouts just to have it cooked a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me try this broth first of all. Wow, that's really good. And I can't believe this yeah. only took 20 minutes just to cook. Yeah. 20 minutes. Well, Chef Han, thank you so much for joining me on Neri's Kitchen. I learned a lot from you today. Thanks for I learned, having me. I think I will make this moving forward. <laughs> that was awesome. Thanks thank for you. tuning in, guys. And tune in for next week where we will be cooking Indian food. See you guys next time. Thanks, Chef. So good.